legendary warriors. The powers that created us now want us all extinguished. We must join forces, or else forever be their slaves. For today, in the name of freedom, we take the battle to them. Let's roll. Good evening, greetings, and salutations. This is yours truly, Dan Adams, a.k.a. the Soulful Conservative, the DA and the Prosecutor, coming to you live once again from the Political Heat Remote Studios, a.k.a. my vehicle, a.k.a. the Blueberry. Technology is wonderful, as I have stated before. And let's go ahead and get right into it from the delicious words <laughs> of the hip-hop legend Slick Rick. When I'm on the mic, there won't be no delaying. So right now, there's no delaying. I got an audio clip blitz I want to get through at the top of the show. And the first clip actually was two clips from the same show. It's from The Five on Fox. And Juan Williams and Greg Gutfeld at DEF CON, whatever the highest DEF CON there can possibly be. There's two clips. I'm going to play the first one, give a pause, and play the second one because that's how we roll. Play the clip. Tower advanced knowledge. He had nothing I on. See. About, he had nothing about Roger Stone, nothing about the sun coming in just before right. the meeting. Yeah, exactly. Right. We no. just went through Russia. That's Stone pretty ridiculous. But again, you are so blind because you, like Greg, are deep in the bunker. You know, if you say that again, I'm going to throw you off the set. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, you no. know, because you know what the, you oh, know what the bunker oh. means? What you're intimating is that who is in the bunker? Adolf Hitler, correct? No, I was no, no, no. That's what you're saying. You are that so is far your, off. No. But you when you so, say somebody is in the bunker, you're in a weak position that you're now screaming. No, no, Juan, 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 you what, you, Juan what you're saying is you choose the worst intent of people's words. No. That, like when I say that I believe you. something, I'm in the bunker. No, what if I said right. that about you? Let's, I let's, never let's, say that about, about you. Bunker. And ladies and gentlemen, the second clip. Play it. Okay, only uh, That's it. one thing to say. Uh, Dana, would you like to add well, something? I just wait, add wait, wait, I want to finish up too, you know. I was going to add something oh, okay. to that point right. um, that you guys were just talking When you guys were talking about the payments um, and whether it is a campaign fi finance violation or it's a personal expenditure. That is something that is at issue. That's the crux of it. But one of the other things that if you're a Trump fan that you might like about what Cohen said today is that he showed there is no pattern of it happening, right? So it's like, it's like a one-time thing. He didn't want to embarrass Melania. So I think that the fact that he did that... With women, though. He said that with women. He said there's other times that they've made payments yes. going back from to 2007 right, where but, he but would I think, pay things to go away. Right, but, he, but that's not a payment because it was, a, it was an embarrassment, right? He's saying that it was a personal thing. He was trying to make sure and protect her from that story, which means that it's not a pattern. And if I were them, I would say then that's actually better for Trump. How's that not a pattern because, if he's doing it consistently? Because he's not doing it for just for the campaign. Oh, but right? he was doing right. it at exactly. the time while running as president. Okay. But here's the thing. What about Morgan? Morgan, Morgan, here? Morgan, Morgan has not spoken. Gosh, you guys ever going to let me finish? Okay. No, All because right. you're always finishing. <laughs> There's somebody sitting there who hasn't said a damn word. You are so deep in the bunker and you... Oh, just, shut up, Juan. I'm spew, in nobody's spew, bunker. Spew, spew. Wait, wait, I mean, it's not enough of your bunker. I'm trying to be polite to somebody on the panel, Juan, which you won't do. Morgan. Which you won't do. Then let her speak. So I think oh the, the question here today is, is did he come to heal America? Did he come to tell the truth? Is he a change? There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Juan Williams and Greg Gutfeld at DEF CON, whatever DEF CON level you want to place it. Now, the second clip, I should say third clip in succession, but the second audio clip blitz is from one rep, Jim Jordan of Ohio, the neighboring state of mine, basically saying and telling and ultimately satisfying me and those of us out here who felt that this Michael Cohen testimony on Capitol Hill at this congressional hearing was nothing but a fiasco. And yes, he is a patsy. Play it. His remorse is non-existent. He just debated a member of Congress saying, I really didn't do anything wrong with the false bank things that, that I'm guilty of and going to prison for. Mr. Jordan, that that's, not, that's not what I said, and you know that that's not that's what exactly I said. What well, I said, you. I pled you guilty, know, and I take responsibility for my actions. <laughs> Shame on you, Mr. Jordan. Uh, Mr. That's Mr. Chairman. not what I said. Mr. 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 Chairman. That's not what I said. What I said is, 
I took responsibility, and I take responsibility. What I was doing is explaining to the gentleman that his facts are inaccurate. I still, I take responsibility for my mistakes, all right? I am remorseful, and I am going to prison. I will be away from my wife and family for years. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not even going to add anything to that because Jim Jordan summed it up for all of us. Now let's move on to the third and final audio clip blitz. And it has to do during that particular Michael Cohen testimony. The one Muslim representative that was just voted in, Rashid Talib, basically stating, and she tried to pull it back, but she knew exactly what the hell she was talking about and who she was referring to, one Mark Meadows, basically saying he was a racist. This is about a three-minute clip. Bear with me, but listen to it, because then you can grasp the disparity and the identity politics from the left. Play it. Just to make a note, Mr. Chairman, just because someone has a person of color, a black person working for them, does not mean they aren't racist. And it is insensitive that some would even say it's the fact that someone would actually use a prop, a black woman, in this chamber, in this committee, <sighs> is alone racist in itself. Donald Trump is setting Mr. a precedent. Mr. Chairman, I ask that her words Donald be Trump taken down. Mr. Trump is setting a precedent. I reclaim my time. Mr. Donald Chairman, Trump is setting a precedent. Mr. Chairman, the highest office can be a Mr. Chairman, the rules are activity. clear. Cover up and hold on to business assets to break campaign finance laws and constitutional clauses. What we have here, Mr. Chairman, is criminal conduct and the pursuit of the highest public office by Mr. Cohen and individual one. I hope that the gravity of this situation hits everyone in this body the court report. and in Congress and across this country. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield the rest of my time. Mr. Chairman, I ask that her words, when she's referring to an individual member of this body, be taken down and stricken from the record. I'm sure she didn't intend to do this, but if anyone knows my record as it relates, it should be you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman, I, I, I would like to hold on. I want the words read. No, no, back. no, 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 no. We, we want to know exactly no, what she said me. about a colleague. Excuse me. Would you like to rephrase that statement, Mr. Lee? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I can actually read it from here. Just to make a note, Mr. Chairman, that just because someone has a person of color, a black person working for them, does not mean they are racist. And it is insensitive that someone would even say racist, say, say it is racist in itself, and to use a black woman as a prop to, move, to prove it otherwise. And I can submit this for the record. If a colleague is thinking that that's what I'm saying, I'm just saying that's what I believe to have happened. And if as a person of color in this committee, that's how I felt at that moment, and I wanted to express that. But... I am not calling the gentleman, um, Mr. Meadows, a racist for doing so. I'm saying that in itself, it is a racist act. Well, I hope not, Mr. Chairman, because I need to be clear on this well, particular. Mr. Chairman. Mr. 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 Meadows, wait a minute. I, I've defended you no, at, at, no, uh, no. Mr. Meadows, with false accusations. Mr. Meadows, I'm the chair. Yes, sir, you are. Thank you. Right. I will clear this up. Now, Ms. Salib, is it, I want to make sure I understand. You did not, you were not intending to call Mr. Meadows a racist, is that right? No, Mr. Chairman, I do not call Mr. Meadows a racist. No, no, I am trying, no, minute, as on. a person of color, Mr. Chairman, just to express myself and how I felt at that moment. Mm -hmm. And so, just for the record, that's what was my intention. All right. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. There you have it. I advise you to go back and listen to this clip again after you've listened to the entire broadcast this evening. So you can get the full scope of what went down, or you can go online and find it for yourself. But I have it here at your convenience. So ladies and gentlemen, this is what the left has offered America for decades. Identity politics, fear-mongering, smearing, besmirching the right. This is all that they have. 
And before I continue the rest of the program, let's give a five-second silence, moment of silence, for the Democrat Party that years ago wasn't like it is now. We all know this. So let's give it a five-second moment of silence. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, a five second moment of silence for the Democrat Party, because now after what has taken place in the last just the last few weeks, let alone the last few decades, they are the leftist, liberal, socialist, communist, Marxist party of America. That's what they are, and that's what they will continue to be. So let's go ahead and move on to my stack of stories. And as I grab the first one here. It has to do with one SOC, ladies and gentlemen, SOC, one Sandy Ocasio-Cortez. Payments to Ocasio-Cortez boyfriend spur FEC complaint from Republican group. A Republican group filed a complaint with the FEC on Wednesday, alleging that Sandy Ocasio-Cortez campaign may have funneled thousands of dollars through an allied PAC to her boyfriend, Riley Roberts. Now, this is still under investigation. We don't know the complete lowdown and details in regards to what went down. But Lord have mercy. This woman, who no one knew over a year ago, has come on the scene. And now, ladies and gentlemen, now she's already in the midst of an investigation. That just shows you how left, left this and liberal, meaning they feel that they can do whatever the hell they want and get away with it. And for the most part, under the eight years of Barack Hussein Obama, they did. You had individuals like Lois Lerner and many others who were allowed to retire and waltz off into the sunset, even though they did major, I mean, major damage to the American people. It may have been one section of the American people, but they knew what they were doing. They knew who they were targeting. Benghazi all the way down. No one's been held accountable under those eight years of one Barack Hussein Obama. Fast forward to 2019. We have this House of Representatives, which the Democrats are in the majority. So more than likely, this FEC complaint will somehow find its way under the table and not see the light of day in regards to anyone being held responsible for anything. Now, let's move on to this, ladies and gentlemen. And we already had a audio clip blitz from one rep, Rashida Tlaib. But let's check this story out, ladies and gentlemen. House and urban development official Lynn Patton fired back at Democrat rep Rashida Tlaib who suggested that Miss Patton, who is black, was Republican Rep. Mark Meadows' prop during the Michael Cohen hearing on Wednesday. Now, that was the, I guess, behind the story scene in regards to why that jackass went after Mark Meadows and she tried to play it off by saying someone. She knew who the hell she was talking about. She was talking about Mark Meadows. Please. We're not that dumb, Rep. Rashida Talib, Muslim Rep. Rashida Talib. We're not that dumb. We're not that naive. We know who you were targeting, and supposedly they hug it. Out, they hugged it out after the hearing. I would have. I would have been like, "Child, please!" I would have walked past her and been like, "Really? Man, pff, you better get the stepping." So that is the backstory of what you heard in regards to that audio clip blitz at the beginning of the show. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I just have left this mania all through the show today. The new California protocol. Illegals now in charge, ladies and gentlemen. California is known for snubbing the president and the law. But the latest move is extreme, even for the golden state of California. For the first time in California's history, an undocumented, I love how to say undocumented, no, this illegal alien 
is serving on a state appointed committee. That's right. A person who shouldn't even be in this country is serving on a state appointed committee. And ironically, ladies and gentlemen, ironically, I don't mean to be I don't mean to be yelling, but Lord, you have to hear this. Ironically, the 33 year old Elizabeth Mateo is a lawyer. Therefore, she swore to uphold the laws of a nation that doesn't even recognize her as a citizen, ladies and gentlemen. And truth be told, she should be deported or could be deported, should be deported at any time. I don't even know where to go with that story because that is complete and utter nonsense and liberal lunacy from the Garden State of California. No friggin' surprise. Now, this right here is not a leftist story. This is a shocker. I know there were rumblings about this in the past few weeks, but now I guess it's almost official. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was indicted on corruption charges, the country's attorney general said Thursday. Attorney General Avachai Mandelbilt, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, said the charges of one count of bribery and two counts of fraud and breach of trust relate to three different cases and came after two years of investigation. The indictments are subject to a hearing and marks the first time in Israeli history that a sitting prime minister has been charged with a crime. So, ladies and gentlemen, I guess seeing that Bibi Netanyahu is now being charged as a, uh, as a, for the first time in Israeli history, a sitting prime minister has been charged with a crime. I guess they want to try and say, oh, we, oh, Israel is Israel did that to Bibi. Let's do it to President Donald J. Trump here in America. That's what the left is thinking. That's what that my, Michael Cohen hearing yesterday was all about. The setup, the pave work that's been laid, the asphalt that's been laid down in regards to trying to impeach, indict, throw in jail President Donald J. Trump. That's what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. Don't get it twisted. And ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, excuse me. Don't get this twisted. Don't even come even close to getting this one twisted. And this should be on your radar like <laughs> when you're passing a cop and you want to make sure that you're doing the speed limit. This should be on your radar like that. House passes brutally dangerous anti-gun bill and is working on another. A second dangerous anti-gun bill. As many of us has anticipated, the Democrat-led Congress this week is ready to pass two insulting and poisonous anti-gun right bills. And this situation deserves a great deal of attention, as I have stated. Nancy Pelosi and her allies just passed H.R. 8, the, in quotes, Bipartisan Backgrounds Check Act on Wednesday. And with a cheesy, comfy name like bipartisan, you know it's got to be dangerous. You know it's got to be filled with just complete and utter nonsense. Taking away the rights of you and I. So, let me continue. Mandating that nearly every firearm transfer in the U.S., be done via a licensed, ladies and gentlemen, licensed firearms dealer, okay? And I'm assuming that the Democrat Party will somehow lay out the framework as to who can be a licensed firearms dealer. Would mandate a federal background check in almost every single case. There are only a couple absurd exceptions that would really be workable for most people in the real world, Nancy and her pals will magnanimously allow temporary transfers when, quote, necessary, necessary to prevent imminent death or great bodily harm or in the course of target shooting or hunting, provided the owner is there to supervise. Enjoy how those exceptions will be policed, policed excuse me, and adjudicated, America. And if you don't, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't do as the Democrat Party commands, Failing to comply with the bill's restrictions will be punishable by up to a year in jail and or a maximum fine of, get it, ladies and gentlemen, $100,000. I don't even know what to say to that. I don't even know where to even go from that. But let me finish the stack of stories with this. 
GOP refers ex-Trump attorney Michael Cohen to DOJ for alleged perjury during hearing. Rep. Jim Jordan of Ohio, Mark Meadows of North Carolina, said they sent a letter referring President Trump's former attorney Michael Cohen to the DOJ for perjury and knowingly making false statements, which we all knew he did. We all knew this. The letter said in part that Cohen's testimony, quote, was a spectacular and brazen attempt to knowing and willingly testify falsely and fictitiously to numerous material facts. His testimony included intentionally false statements designed to make himself look better on a national stage. What do you think that opening statement was? Mr. Cohen's prior conviction for lying to Congress merits a heightened suspicion that he has yet again testified falsely before Congress, end quote. Actually, I do have one more story. And does this, this is not going to surprise you, ladies and gentlemen. It's not going to surprise you. The wife of blackface supporting Virginia Governor Ralph Northam appears to now be ensnared in her own race scandal. Thanks entirely to the alleged disturbing behavior she exhibited when a group of eighth grade students toward Virginia's historical executive mansion where he and she, husband, excuse me, where she and her husband resides. I guess I can't talk today, ladies and gentlemen. I can't read either. Let me continue. While hosting the tour on February 21st, First Lady Pam Northam allegedly handed cotton to the daughter of a black state employee, Leah Dozier Walker who oversees the Office of Equity and Community Engagement at the Virginia Department of Education, and her friends. All three are black. She then allegedly asked the three to imagine being forced to pick cotton as a slave. Ladies and gentlemen, I almost don't even have a comment for that, but I have one. Hashtag Lord have mercy. Until next time, and thank you for tuning in. Let me get all the particulars out of the way. Then get them out in the first part of the show. But you can reach me on social media at Dan Adams Show. That's at Dan Adams Show, all one word, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Gab. The website, thepoliticalheat.com, all one word, thepoliticalheat.com. Email danadams73 at gmail.com. Hit me up, share this particular episode out. And also, if you want to support this said program, The Dan Adams Show, go to paypal.me forward slash Dan Adams 73. Once again, you want to support my efforts, go to paypal.me forward slash Dan Adams 73. Big shout out to the godfather, Hutch Bailey Jr for allowing me to grace his airwaves on WHBJ Talk Radio. This is where truth lives, ladies and gentlemen. Recognize and realize. Until next time, God bless you and yours. May he keep you and your family safe. Until next time, God bless. Peace. And you know this, man. People keep asking if I'm back, and I haven't really had an answer. But now, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. If I said it, I meant it. Quack my tongue for no one, for no 